Hello, everyone. It's Nikki Backerl D'Angelo, and I need to apologize to you for episode 55 of Star Citizen Addicts Anonymous. I'm going to be putting up another one, and it's because I messed up and I hit the render button before I actually laid in the title sequence. So the title sequence from the last episode is what you saw. So that's being corrected. It will be uploaded shortly. All right. The second thing is I started to tell you what the next stretch goal was, and it's going to be pets. And I'm kind of excited about that. I'm sorry. I played the Pokemon game with all the pets inside of World of Warcraft. Sorry, I'm a little bit ashamed to say that. But I traveled around and tried to collect as many as I could, and I got quite a lot of them. Not as many as most, but, well, I should say, not as many as some, but more than most. So I'm very happy that they're going down that road, and I think it's going to be kind of fun. A lot of different types of pets could be in the game. I think about Buck Rogers in the uh, 70s, 80s, with that TV show with the little robot going beady, 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 or boxy. You know, all the things they talk about. It's going to be actually fun. So tomorrow, there's going to be 200 javelins sold, $2,500 a piece, and 5,000 Aurora game packages for $20 a piece. So that's pretty cool, and I think that this is going to be one of those things that are going to start to make this game set itself apart. Why am I excited about a $2,500 ship? Well, I'm excited about a player-controlled capital ship. The price is something I'm definitely not excited about. But you have to understand this about the Javelin. It was never intended to be a single-person-owned ship, which is going to be difficult. Because organizations slash guilds slash alliances slash whatever you call them don't really last forever in games like this. So... You're going to buy a ship for $2,500 and utilize it as an asset for an organization. That opens you up for a lot of different things that could go wrong. Now, good news is it's a big enough ship to have a hangar bay. The hangar bay will fit one redeemer. And that means it's probably only going to, well, we're going to go and we're going to see exactly what it could fit. But it's got multiple guns, but this ship is not going to come armed to bear. And just listen to this, okay? It's important to note that this isn't this isn't the ultimate battleship for players who can afford it. Javelins will be sold stripped of military hardware, and it will be a new starting challenge for players to work together with their organizations to outfit them. The Javelin comes with LTI, which is important. $2,500 ship better come with LTI. But that's not all. And then that's where they tell you that uh, they're looking at the hardcore players to support the $5,000, $20 Aurora game packages. I'm stoked. I'm very, very psyched about this because I might not be buying one myself, but I know that I will see the bridge, the hangar deck of the Javelin. So let's read a little bit about it. The first thing I want to bring your attention to is the little stories that they do over here, written by um, David Haddock and Will's team. Okay? Make sure you read this. Now, about the ship, the Aegis Dynamics Javelin is here, designed for use by the UEE military and featured prominently in Squadron 42. The Javelin is massive, modular capital ship that can be appropriated for entrepreneurial use. With a detailed interior, plenty of modular room options, and a high crew capacity, the Javelin is a ship intended for group play. In the real world, the Javelin is well on its way through the development pipeline. Designed by David Hobbins, who has left to go work on Star Wars, the Javelin has since been implemented by the team. In other words, it got picked up by Foundry 42, and it's going to be used in the opening campaign of Squadron 42. The ship features a total of five decks, each with a variety of crew positions and areas to explore and utilize. Please note before buying that the Javelin is not a free ride to interstellar domination. While it's the largest ship we have made available to backers, it's actually the smallest UEE ship of the line. 
Additionally, javelins sold to players are used by the UEE. They are surplus ships with the military weapons removed. We went through this. So we have to remember that there is going to be a sale tomorrow at 6 a.m., noon, 6 p.m., and midnight. Okay? So we're looking at these pretty much to be done by the time you get this. See the bridge. The javelins are heavily armored. Well, the javelins heavily armored bridge looks out, out over uh, the rest of the ship's superstructure. God, I wish you guys had braces and you could understand this. Centered around a fleet of glass command and control interfaces, the bridge allows a dozen crewmen to have full run of both the destroyer's facilities and ion awareness of its deep space environs. Bridge positions include Captain, Executive Officer, which we'll call XO, Communications Weapons Radar, and Helm, and Science positions. The bridge is surrounded by escape pods designed to allow the entire command team to make a quick egress should the worst happen. These escape pods, which can be found throughout the ship, are designed to carry five crew each. These escape pods are military spec, oriented for easy retrieval, by an unladen Argo transport ships. That's pretty cool. We don't know what the Argos are yet, do we? But I remember what the Argo was. Star Rangers. <laughs> okay, top deck. The Javelin's top deck, also known as Officer Country, is home to the quarters for the ship's captain and executive officer, XO. With all the comforts of home, the prime attraction of the top deck is six modular rooms and the upper hangar, used for small launches or cargo. The Aegis Dynamics produces an array of battle-oriented room modules, which can easily be slotted. So another modular ship, kind of like the, too many Rees in this world, like the Retaliator. The Javelin isn't a name, the ship's internal, isn't just a name, the ship's internal layout philosophy is based around long, straight Javelin corridors. Right-angle turns are almost, are used almost exclusively to connect more long straight corridors, giving the ship an overall cramped but stretched feel. Okay, the mid deck is going to be where the real work happens. It includes access to two torpedo bays, six turret emplacements, giving the ship both offensive and defensive capabilities. The javelin's engine column is located here. This is going to be a beautiful, beautiful ship. I mean, take a look at the renders so far of this ship. Here's the access, here's the corridors, here's another one showing the top deck, here's the bridge. This is the exterior showing where one ship probably could land. Pretty cool if you ask me. We'll take a look at some more in a second. The bottom deck is dedicated, has six dedicated cargo rooms, two engineering facilities, and access to an engine column. Oh, wow, to the engine column? That sounds big. Javelin's main hangar is also located in this area. So if you remember, we had a small hangar on the top deck. My guess that's for a launch for the captain, right? And then you have a larger hangar in the bottom deck that can fit a single redeemer. And then they tell you you could fit one Gladius, one Hornet, one Avenger, not one of each, one Gladiator, one 300, two M50s, two Auroras, or four Merlins, a Mustang, or a Cutlass. That's a lot, right? Um, well, that's not a lot, I mean. that that It could carry one fighter, which is kind of weird. What it's supposed to carry is a Redeemer, and the Redeemer being a boarding ship. Um, that makes sense, right? A contingent of Marines on board? That definitely makes sense here. But just one fighter isn't going to hold back a swarm of Vandal or an opposing... Organization. Subdecks. All right, finally, the Javelin has a pair of subdecks with access to additional functionality. Subdeck 1 provides access to two module component rooms, while Deck 2 features three Class 6 ATA turret emplacements and a maintenance EVA airlock. Oh boy, that's going to come into play with the salvage system. So here's the meat and potatoes of it Javelin's going to be 345 meters long. 148 meters wide, 65 meters tall. Um, we don't know what the uh, empty weight is yet, but it could carry 5,400 standard units. That's 
far less than the 9,000 that the Banu merchantmen can carry. It needs 23 crew members to man this. So if you're not in an organization, 23 crew members is a lot. It has two size 8 power plants, four TR-7 primary thrusters. It's got 12 TR-4 maneuvering jets, and its max shield is 14. So, I mean, this thing is, you know, pretty much going to be a stubborn piece of iron to take out of the sky. There's 13 size 5 ATA turrets, which I think are anti-missile, anti-spacecraft. Um, Two size 7 STS turrets, don't know what those are yet. Two 9mm or 9 meter Desolator Class A anti-ship torpedo launchers. 16 5-man, 3 meter by 3 meter by 4 meter escape pods. 12 modular component bays and 6 modular rooms. This is going to take a lot of money from your organization to keep flying to upgrade and get ready for the game. Oh my lord, this is a big ship, and it's out there for sale at 6 a.m. All right, folks, that photo right at the top that I keep on jumping over, that just says it all. It's a big, giant, beautiful ship. Now, I am definitely going to be melting my Redeemer, regardless of what you guys say at this point. I saw the picture of the Carrick, and I'm sold. I'm going to wind up with a Redeemer again. I guarantee that. I support the Four Horsemen, their design, Sandy, and the rest of the team at CIG for having the next great Starship contest. And I do think that this is going to be something that I want to be part of. Um, owning a ship that was created by another, you know, by just another backer, or a group of backers in that situation. But, you know, when it comes down to it, I am definitely going to be in the exploration part of this game, getting the Carrick at the absolute lowest price it's going to be offered, and getting a couple of the extras, like the model that will go in the hangar, like the poster, is not important to me, but kind of cool, right? So I know it's going to be a very long time before I get to sit on the bridge of my Carrick. And that I can go and sit on the, the flight deck. I could sit in the captain's seat of my Redeemer any day. But I'm looking so forward to that Carrick. So when the Carrick goes on sale tomorrow, people, I'll most likely be one of the first people to grab one. All right. I'm going to let you all go. I think that three videos on a holiday is more than enough. Yeah, my kids were at my exes, so I had a lot of time. But you know what? I have fun doing these videos, and I really do have a passion for this game, and I hope all of you do also. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for commenting. Remember, if you do like this video and all the others, to keep clicking that thumbs up down below every time you hear one, should you choose. With that said, you all be safe out there, and I'll talk to you soon.